Okay, um, trying out brand new PC. Um, hopefully everybody can see and hear me okay. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at a Missile Command PCB uh, by Atari. Uh, this is a customer repair job that came in with uh, what, he, what looks like initially as a RAM fault. So we're going to delve into this and uh, see what's uh, what's wrong. Um, we've got a, a complete new setup now, so I've got a camera obviously, as you can see it's a completely different angle in here. Uh, I'm still trying to get the other ones to work and get them into position, so I'm still struggling to get them pointed at the oscilloscope and the fluke over there. So you're going to see a kind of a mixed shot where they might not be particularly great to read, but I think you get the general idea. I'm going to try and explain what I'm doing as, as I go along. Uh, I've got my nice cup of coffee from the es uh, Nespresso machine. Uh, that should keep us awake through this. Don't know how long this is going to take. Ram faults can be an absolute pain in the ass. So, but um, let's see where we go. So, if I press that one, right, or even better, that one. Okay. I will have. I'll try and have faith in this new equipment. So. Um, here we have a missile command board um, it might be sometimes easier if I keep OBS on screen so I can see what you can see as well uh, sorry about gut cam here and I should also have the um, audio sync working pretty well as well apparently we're using very little CPU to do this only about 10% which is pretty damn good actually considering I'm muxing cameras like crazy uh, alright so let's, uh, let's have a crack Atari Missile Command PCB, uh, Jammer Test Loom, Standard Jammer Rig over here. Uh, I'll try and keep um, I'll try and keep everything to where you can see. Obviously, everything's backwards, isn't it? I keep forgetting it's all uh, it's all going to be. Uh, oop, yeah, you'll need me to move that way for actually when you've got this particular view. Maybe either enough to shrink those cameras up and them on the other side at some point later. Anyway, uh, this section here is the ROMs. We've got CPU, we've got a uh, pokey chip over here, uh, and then we've got a block of RAM chips here. All right, so I'm going to fire it up. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll see my test monitor. On the top right hand corner, uh, you'll see the uh, uh, the other, uh, sorry, the uh, oscilloscope and the fluke which are both powered up and ready. The only other thing I'm going to do now is connect up the test clip. So that grounds the test point and is a bit like you opening the coin door and switching the test on. So if I reach over there. So that's telling me there's a, I've got multiple RAM failures. to run fail. Let's reset. Let's do a full reset on that. That was an interesting one. I've not seen that one before. There we go. I think we've got a V-Sync issue as well to, to go with it. Making that low grumbling tone tells me V-Sync isn't working particularly well. Uh, well, you know what? We can fix that because, um, let's see, hey, where are we going to start here with this? So we had a RAM issue that was coming up. Um, I pressed on a chip here and we suddenly had a ROM issue. So I'm going to take this chip out using my uh, green chip puller, making sure you don't pull the socket up. I will probably replace these sockets as well. Uh, Links the chips look okay. I'll give them a quick, uh, just a quick scrub. I'm using a wire brush here and very, very gentle pressure. I'm just literally scuffing the surface more than putting any pressure on it whatsoever. Uh, personally, I advise you use a fiberglass pencil, but I go through them that fast. But uh, what you might also get as well on this uh, on this video is you might get bald cam. Which is basically where um, a bald cam, where <laughs> effectively where um, you can see the top of my head when I lean forwards. So let's just um, let's just ask. Uh, I'll go to the chat window because I've got that open. Oh yeah, some people jumped into chat. Who've we got in the chat tonight? Uh, let's see if I can uh, enlarge the text for that so it's blindy friendly. 
Um, who have we got in tonight? We've got... Oh! Milestar Electronics. Hey, we're back. Uh, I'm mate. Yes, we are. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I really need to get the... Uh, I really desperately need the fonts to be bigger in these text windows so I can read them for a distance. Ooh, good stuff. Glad uh, glad to have caught your life. No problem. Uh, Mike's better too from the camera angle. Excellent. No problem. Uh, monitor is a bit out of focus. What my eyes are. No. Nivag uh, uh, Um No, it's not your eyes. It's the camera because I've had to um, focus it from a distance. So I will have another camera, um, another two cameras hopefully, when I figure out how to how to mount them properly again um, and plug them and plug them in because I had problems getting two cameras to work on this new system, let alone four. And I own five of these Logitech C920s plus also it would take up the place of where my coffee cup goes as well on the uh, on my desk. So uh, Ashley Holroyd looks like an all-nighter job. Nah. Probably about an hour, I reckon, this. Uh, unless it starts trolling me. Um, so, somebody commented to me on Facebook, by the way. Yes, I did. Well, yes and no. I didn't just copy um, Lewis Rossman uh, for him doing live videos. I've been wanting to do this kind of thing for quite some time. And this... Uh, I, I'm, I've been an avid follower of his and the MacBook repairs and things like that. And also where some of the... Uh, some of the stuff that he talks about on his channel and I'll be doing some similar stuff for that because I think it's just a good forum and things so um, anyway but uh, let, let's not uh, get too far into the chat because I really do um, all nighters are the best well it depends what we're talking about um, you know I can think of better things to do than re re repair a PCB uh, on an all nighter drinking uh, partying which I was uh, um, out with Sean uh, Sean in your face Holly from the 10 pence arcade podcast the other night for a couple of hours after the back cave uh so anyway let's get to this otherwise we're never gonna uh, you know we're gonna be here all night aren't we uh one last one uh, oh steady cam and hope it ain't all night we both need to go into work tomorrow yeah actually uh yeah about that um <laughs> no 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 i'm coming in tomorrow i'm coming in um so anyway right so um and who works with me and very generously uh, um, is the like chief fabric cobbler of, uh, of the of the company <laughs> has uh, joined onto the stream what else have we got Harold Schofield I uh, I like your close-up shots better are we in board repair or the porn industry here mate um, I've been in both so I've worked in both <sighs> Right, anyway, let's go on with board repair. Right, from this point onwards, I will not be able to see the comments. You guys chat amongst yourselves. I will try and dive back into them momentarily here and there. Uh, let's see. Let's get back to OBS. See what you can see. Right, okay, so you can see that. Uh, I need the schematic. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm going to do uh, signature testing first, I think. See, uh, we'll put the fluke onto it. So let's do, let's do that, shall we? Um, that's going to be probably the, the easiest thing to do first. Uh, we get the schematic, because I'll need that myself anyway. And that, right. So, um, I'm going to pull the fluke, uh, pull the CPU out of its socket. And this one, oh, there we go. That's been socketed. Yes, it has. Um, so, I'm going to pop this out of its socket, like so. A little bit. It looks like more force than it actually is. We know the CPU is running because it's trying to execute code. It, the CPUs um, do one of two things. They work or they die. Uh, there is kind of no in between. You don't really get flaky CPUs. Um, right. You can't see me doing the brushing because I'm keeping any flex that fall off away from the PCB. Right. Well, we keep the um, we keep the CPU over there out right of the way. And we grab the old uh, fluke. Uh, test probe. We'll just do a quick uh, manual test. Is it working? Auto. Yeah, bus test 6502 pod, which is what this is. Okay, configure the flute to not um, bother about the uh, bad power supply and ignore the reset as well. So let's do this. So, how I work with awkward boards with the flute. So, um, place the flute in the socket. 
And by awkward, I mean where the orientation of the CPU socket is kind of the wrong way around for what you really want. So these were designed obviously with this in mind. So I then gently lift it over without bending too much or pulling on the thing and lie that down next to me over here. So looks like you could uh, you can actually see that the CPU uh, pod is on the thing. Right, okay. So I'm gonna switch on the board, which is doing a round test at this point. And that's all good. Right, it says data bits too tied on when I do an auto bus test. I'm going to turn the volume down on the... Yeah, that's better because I don't want to hear that whining continuously. So beta, data bits too tied, except the, the code seems to be partially running in test mode. That's very interesting. And it says data bit 5 tied. Ah, O oh, and one tied, three tied. Hmm. I want consistency out of this. I don't think that's the case. Um, have I got something wrong here? If I put this into the socket, bad. Is it offset? Looks like it's in absolutely spot on. Lift the board up. Yeah, am I out of the socket? I'm going to pop it back out of the socket, so I'll turn it off. Doesn't feel like I'm not in the socket. But let's release anyway. No. Nope. Normally, it would say um, active or uh, something like bad power supply, and that happens. Right, that's better. Auto detector bus, okay. Right, let's do some signatures for a start off. I suspect the game codes all reading correctly, and we'll get to the RAM in a second. But if I know the game codes are in fine then I feel better about how the whole system board works so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the um, uh, I have the, uh, the the signatures already in our system uh, right let's do uh, all right I want this technical note here um, so I have to change to a window capture uh, if I give you schematic like that and then um, this will just take me a second to show you what you want. This is the first time doing it. So window capture, which is that one. And then do, uh, what we're calling it. Uh, this is, what window is this going to be? This is, um, oh, come on, brain. Uh, this is no good. Um, browser, just call it that, it's easier. Uh, and I want to see that one. Actually, anything from the same executable, that, that will do. And, okay. Right, you should be able to see that now. Yeah, you can. And it's on top. So if I just move it down in the food chain a little bit, so you can see... Yeah, like that, that'll do. Uh, no, move the PD, move, ah, there we go, move the camera. Camera needs to be at the top and the browser needs to be above the camera. There we go. Right, you can now see that. Okay. So what you should be able to see now is the signatures on here. So on the board, so what Atari did is they called certain things. Now it's obviously, uh, <laughs> there's, there's uh, amateur hour mistake number one for this, which we'll need to just uh, get rid of. I find the damn thing. Uh, browser. Let's 
somewhere over here. Yeah, that's better. <sighs> all right, this should work all in real time. Okay. Right, that's better. <sighs> right. Um, I'll have to do a quick edit on the video before it uh, remains on YouTube. There's a difference between what you see and what I can see. Alright, so for my sanity, I'm going to just enlarge the, uh, the font there and you should also see it enlarged. Yes, you do. Right. So Atari labelled these ROMs with a, a prefix code 035, um, 03582 uh, and then they start 025 on this and then there's two versions of it. Set 1 is oddly called minus 02 and set 2 is called minus 01. So what we're going to try and figure out is which version of the ROM set that we've got in. Because the board's trying to boot into test mode and it's actually making something meaningful happen, we'll assume that at least ROM, um, the last ROM, sorry, the boot ROM, in this particular case, which is, um, if I go like that, uh, which is this one here. So a C6502 uses the last bit of uh, the ROM. What they actually do is they map this both at 7800 and also at um, F800 as well, because those, uh, the last couple of bytes in the thing are the boot vector. Um, read upon 6502s if you're not sure, and how the warm start and cold start vectors work. Right. So. Uh, I'm going to use the fluke. You won't be able to see this, but I'll tell you what I'm doing. So I'm going to do a ROM test. Uh, I'm going to test from 7800 um, 7800 to 7FFF. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a signature of 0 in, which then means it's going to tell me what the signature is. My cheap method of doing it. Um, yeah, you can't see that. I wonder if I can get the other thing up. Um, if I just go to, no, you won't be able to see it anyway, so there's no point, right, okay. So it tells me it failed, which is good, and I get the signature, signature was 36FE, which is not what I'm expecting for any signature. So I'll do a repeat, 7800 to 7FFF, it could be set 3. Sig was, uh, da, da, da. yeah, that doesn't match what it should be. So, what's happening here is I'm doing a repeat test a couple of times on this uh, on this ROM on this ROM region. Ah, there we go. B A A A. No, I'm looking for B eight eight. B effectively or B eight eight eight. Ah, I got it that time. I've got a, I've got a flaky socket. So first job I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the board off. Um, uh, this is where I have to remember all my shortcut keys I've set up for this. That one, Control F two. So I've turned the board off at this point. What I'm going to do is this ROM here. Um, let me point at it with something that you can actually see. So this one here is the boot ROM. Uh, the 05, so it should say on it 035, da, 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 da. yeah, 035825 dash 02. So I'm going to take that ROM out and just give the, give it a reseat. Now, what I, I've just done another board for this customer earlier on, which um, I didn't film um, for it. This one's been replaced previously by the look of it. Okay, it shouldn't be flaky in that case. Well, let's take it out and have a look. There we go. Out we come. Oh, somebody replaced it with single swipe sockets. Okay. So, crap socket for a crap socket. All right, fair enough. So, we'll just um, do that. But, yeah, pressing on the chip seemed to uh, relieve the issue. Put that in. I'll probably change all these sockets in the ROM section, which I won't have done on the other board I did for that custom. Okay. Um... So, and if you're still uh, watching, then I need you to come up with um, some kind of fabric cobble for the two cameras. 
that are better than what what I had because I had one that was at a weird angle, and um, and one that was uh, on a, a little man photo arm. So let's have a look. Right. So I'm doing the ROM test again. You hear the little low rumble going on, and it should come back B eight 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 at this point. Uh, let's have a look. That one. 97FE. So this isn't right. Why are we getting that? Repeat it. Could be the ROM itself is flaky. 7BCD. Um, right. So we'll do a ROM test at 7. We'll, go, we'll move down 7000 to 77FF with a signature of. Uh, signature for that is uh, I'm looking for B25D but I'll, I'll just hit zero no. if I don't get this bit working none of it will work FF36 so if I repeat it again now I had this before I had this previously. And it could it could well be the sighting ACBF. Do a bus test. Yeah, you see I'm still getting this error where it says data bits are tied on the bus. So that's why it's not reading. So the reason it's not reading the ROM is because it thinks that the CPU isn't reading correctly. Data bits one tied. Let's test OK. OK, so let's have a look at the CPU socket. Because the problem I had on the other board, the reason I'm doing this is I'm getting inconsistency from a pod that I know works. So take the pod off, put the pod connector back in the socket for the pod and do a bus test do a test and that says absolutely fine 6502 okay so let's have a look at this socket so there's some there's definitely some crap under there <clears throat> Whatever it was, seems to have... Um, I think something might have crawled under one of the ROM sockets. Okay. Let me see if I can... Uh, that one. Right. CPU is here. And all these ROMs up here all share the same data bus and address bus. The only thing that's different between any of them is the, um, uh, the chip select. So when you want a particular region of memory, one of these chip selects will go lower, its output enable will go low, whichever way they've decided to engineer it. So it wouldn't surprise me if there isn't something underneath one of the chips. So let's, I'll tell you what, let's lift every one of these ROM chips out. This is what I had on the other one. That was its cause. So I'll put them in order and it's easy for me to put them back. Taking them all out isn't a big deal when you've got a chip, a chip puller. Um, I had a battle zone board once that the reason that, that wasn't able to perform either a um, bus test or a ROM signature analysis was because of a dead uh, spider underneath one of the... Uh, dead spider underneath one of the uh, chips. So... Okay. Right, that's all of them out. Can I see anything going on underneath them? So all those times when we wish you had a, a compressed air machine at home, it would actually help with this. A little, little miniature wind squisher. Okay, let's have a let's have a look on the back of the board in case there's anything weird going on there. Could be one of these two four fours failing. Yeah, some smoochy solder that uh, somebody's uh, got from a previous board repair attempt. 
Uh, hmm, reset button's got uh, quite long tails on it. Nothing really of, of major interest. Okay. Let's plug the socket connector back in. Uh, our edge connector. Put the fluke test probe back on. If it comes to it, if it keeps telling me this, then I will um, pull the schematic up and I'll look specifically at the data bus. But I think it's just, I think there's no, uh, there's unexpected just garbage. So with Atari making all these traces all exposed on the top, it's very easy for dust and things to short them out. So I mean, I have ways I can do that. Uh, I, have, I have some freezer sprayer, which will quite happily double as some compressed air. as well. That'll work. I'll uh, whip the pokey chip out as well because that's not needed to do a ram rom test. Right, there we go, there she comes. Mm -hmm. Over there. Yeah, nothing that I care about there. Free spray is not really the ideal thing for this, but it works. It is compressed air at the end of the day. All right, bus test. See, it still says bits zero and one tied, and then OK. All right. So let's go to the schematic, and we'll, I think we might have a bad uh, buffer driver chip. So let's go to the schematic, which I think is i give you that one. It is. And then if I turn the browser one off. Yay, there we go. We can see the schematic. Uh, actually, we'll be able to see. That's the manual, not the schematic. So let me load the schematic for that section of the of the board, for one thing. And change views. So we require, I think, I think it's this one. That's the microprocessor. Yes, that is right. Okay. So let me change views so you can see it. Atari put all the, I need to put all these in one file, ideally. Ah, you can see that it automatically changed. Oh, that was clever of it. Yeah, must be, oh, because it's, it's ah, I see, because it's, ta it's tabbed. Ah, right, okay, I didn't, didn't know that. Right, new version of the PDF viewer from what we used to have, right. Also, um, zooms a lot faster as well, this version. So, over here, microprocessor clock. So, that's all your clock circuits. I think we're fine there. Uh, microprocessor, here we go. So, here's a 6502. And it's telling me, if I press the thing again, now it says OK. Oh, there we go. And if you press it a few times without touching the board, it'll keep going between various data bits. Uh, so what we do is we look at the bottom here where we've got data. And specifically this section here. So my guess is going to be uh, that we're going to have a short... Uh, so what, what the Fluke's doing, uh, if... If I can get this big enough so I can see and you can see. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah. What the Fluke's doing is it's looking at here, which is its data output. And it's only able to see as far as that chip there, the perimeter, the input side. Or, um, if I go and follow it over to here. Or as far as... Uh, probably this chip here or this chip here like so which allows you access to the ROMs so one of those it's it's saying that basically we've got short somewhere between the CPU and that now I don't think we have I think what we've got is probably dirt on the line or something along that kind of thing 
Come on. Oh, there we go. Keep pressing the wrong keys. So, which ROMs in which sockets am I looking at? So it should be these ones here, I think. All three, five, eight, two, oh, one, two. Yep. Yeah. Versus. Yeah, two, four, two, five. Yep. Yeah. So there's there's two of these things involved in it. Now I don't know which one's going to be which. Uh, at this point. Uh, this is where it gets tricky to diagnose this. So, um, all right, I've got three two four fours that would have to, one of which would have to come out. We're looking at the one at B two. Uh, sorry, is that E two? Yeah, the one at E two. Uh, the one at. BC1 and the one at HP3. That's interesting that it's there. HP, NP3 and BC1. Right, so let's have a look. See, so BC1, uh, if I, do you have the camera? All right, so what you couldn't see there was this bottom half, the schematic. So BC1 is this chip here. Um, that's actually AB1, BC1 is that one. So it's, not, it's saying OK now, and then I press it again, it says bits two tied, one, and then OK. So, not sure whether we've got something attached under that chip or the chip itself the only way to really figure this out is to take all three of those chips out until we get a stable data bus because snipping the legs on them which is another common technique won't solve the problem so it doesn't matter what I'm doing whether I'm twitching the board or not I'm getting an okay some of the time so let me just hit um one of these chips with so i'm just going to touch these chips so that one seems okay it doesn't seem particularly hot uh powers on to the board the other one was at what np3 which is this one here that one doesn't seem to be getting particularly hot either and then the other one was at uh, e1 i think uh, That was the other one. Uh, go up. E2. 2. E, B, C, D. None of them feel like they're getting particularly warm. Uh, there is a couple of chips on the board which feel like they're slightly warm, but that wouldn't cause the issue with the data bus that we're talking about. So let's let's do that. Could be under the CPU socket itself. But the thing is, there's only three components that actually sit at the at the edge of the data bus. Oh, and then they go to this edge connector down here, I suppose. Yeah, it's going to go to this edge connector here. Mm. But they come straight. Let me have a look underneath the board. No, it's not the pod or the cable on the pod. Not that much. No. Hmm. All right. 
well, we've got no option then but to take some chips out of the board and see what happens. Um, it might be underneath the chip, it could eat very easily. There's no signs of repair in this part of the circuit. Um, like I say, it's only showing me, it's only complaining about the connection between here and, and, and here or anything on this path here, the data bus path. So I suppose that's uh, going to be job one is take three and take these three chips out. Uh, one of them's obviously failing under um, under load. So <sighs> which one's it going to be? And there's no real easy way to fa to figure this out without snipping every leg. So I might as well actually desolder them. Um, if it's saying that two of the pins are tied intermittently, it's it's either muck underneath it or something like that. I'm going to pop the CPU back out of its socket. It does seem to be trying to run the code, so something must be working. Let's take that out. I have had this kind of error on these boards before. Usually using the old uh, eyes 1.0 as it were. Usually does wonders. What pins are the CPU? So if I zoom that bit there. Come on, here we go. So I'm looking at 36. So it's it keeps saying stuff like 0 and 1. Uh, let's get a multimeter and see if I can find any shorts that are there. If there's no shorts when the board's turned off, then it's a device that's causing the problem. So a multimeter. Uh, and it's not shorted to ground, it's shorted together. So what we're looking at is 33, 32, 31, 29, 28, 27, 26. So let's start at 33. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three. Well, that's okay because there's pads there immediately next. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nothing. Go to one. Two. No. So there's no short when the board's powered off. Okay? So let me turn the board on. Alright, so I won't get anything to work at this point. So 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So 26 to that. No, getting nothing. Okay, well, that's interesting. I'm that getting zero zilch. I'm doing it like that. Right. Hmm. Is it the fact? Is it the pod? Is it the connection from the pod to the flute? The fact that I'm laying it across the board at an odd angle. All the rest of those those problematic things that I shouldn't be doing with it. Worked fine when I did the board earlier. I've got nothing on that. And at the worst case, I will get the other 6502 pod of mine out and we'll prove it with that. Right. Oh shit. Uh -huh. Just bent the pin back in accident. Very carefully bend that back into. Uh, just be very, very careful with these. Now, 
There we go, green. That socket could be bad. That wouldn't be the first time. It's, it's basically saying zero and seven, then it goes okay, and zero and seven, okay, one tied, okay, okay, two tied. Something's not right. Okay, let's grab the old oscilloscope then. Let's see what that's saying. These are always the worst ones to find out a lot. So it's not to do with putting the fluke pod upside down. I just want to have a quick look at what's going on in each of the data buses. Uh, see if I can make it that you can see what I'm doing. Uh, that one? Yeah, that should do. So I need... Um, it doesn't matter what mode they get the, the boards in. I just need rain peg, don't I? Uh, ground, ground, ground. Where's the ground on this thing? Ground, that'll do. So what you can't see me do is poke the oscilloscope probe underneath the CPU. It's the fact that it's getting this occasional tide thing that bothers me. when the CPU is actually in the socket. See that one's got some noise on it there. No, nope, it's fine. So if you see the oscilloscope just moving momentarily. It's because the flute's putting out a, a signal across it and comparing what it sees. I right, can't see anything wrong on that channel there, so I can't see uh, what would I need to do at this point. I would need to intermittent. So I'm going to grab the old my uh, this again, the multimeter. Just have a look to see what's going on. I'm getting nothing. So I don't think there is a physical tie. At least, I'm pretty sure there isn't. Could be a flaky chip. Right, okay, let's get the other fluke pod. We're fortunate we have a second fluke, fluke pod, so turn the fluke off. Also, reset the connector for the fluke. That could be causing it easily. It wasn't particularly well seated, that. Let's try that again. No bad power supply. No. Right. Turn that on. No. Bits one tied. Bits zero and seven tied. Okay. I'll grab a two four four and piggyback some stuff. I might uh, 
244. I'm getting close to the conclusion I'm going to have to pull th all three of these chips out of the board. But let's see if I can uh, narrow it down. So I've got a. What I want to do is try and make the bus disagreement worse at this point. So that's BC1. Consistently bad. I'll take consistently bad any day. No. Okay. Let's swap the flick pods. to interface pod. Okay. So I'll take that out. Put that back there. If we have problems with the pod, I'd rather eliminate it from the equation. I don't think we have. But I have two pods. So I'll just change the cup down the floor for a minute. I'll move it in a sec. It's entirely possible that one could, one of them could be having trouble. Solid, switch you on. Uh, it says pod, te uh, pod test fail for some reason. 6502 fail. Is that not in its is that not in its little hole correctly? See, now it says OK. So I don't think that was just in its... Uh, it's, uh, it's, ah, I see what the problem is. It can't physically fit in this uh, test connector. There you go. 6502 OK. I don't know if you can actually read that. Doubtful. Uh, but if I turn that light off, you might be able to. That just makes it difficult for me to see stuff on the board. So I'll have to sort of lighting out in here. OK. So that says OK now. I'm happy with that. It's just it doesn't. It's somebody's replaced the pin header at some point for it, um, so we need to be careful with this. Well, why? Let me get the kink out of the way for a start off. in the CPU socket that caused this kind of problem either. Right, there we go, we're in. Okay, configure, like so, go for that, 
I want it to give me the same error. Yep. Yeah. Same intermittent errors. Oh, okay. Because <sighs> we're never going to get a ROM test to work. So if I go 0 to 3 FF, very much doubt that a RAM test is going to work. It won't because it's going to say data error at no, 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 because the bus test is failing. Right, okay. No option but to take some chips out of the board at this point. Which also means. That's going to have to come in for servicing. I can put the spare pod away because it's obviously not the pod. So, right away. I didn't think it was the end of the pod. Right. Um, I can see the full board. So we're going to take out, I'm going to put this overhead light back on so I can see. We're going to take out it should be this one, BC1. I'll put some stickers on them there, it's easy to identify them. So we're going to take you, we're going to take uh, E2, which is you. And we're going to take that one out as well. So with three three chips we're going to take out. Yep, yeah, you can just about see the stickers, I think, on that one. Yeah, there's the red stick, my crappy red sticker. Come on, desoldering station. Up you come. Oh, you're almost there. Right. Now, I'm tempted to just pull all three off real quick. Um, let's have a look underneath the board. Can I see, before I do this, uh, it's a time consuming process and I really don't want to do it if I don't have to. Can I see any kind of issue, something that could be causing this sort of short out on the board somewhere? No, it's, it's not an actual trace that's shorted, it's a chip that's my problem. Um, so I don't think I have any, any other option other than start taking these out there then. Okay. The soldering station. Clean the tip. Clean the nozzle. Much better. Right then, okay. So, don't know how we're going to be able to get you to see, because I can't work that way down on the board. Uh, which chip is it? That one. By the way, let me just take a moment to shill for the channel. If you like what we do, please ring the bell and subscribe. Because apparently, and I've noticed this more and more, if you do not ring that bell, you do not get notifications that we're doing things like these live videos. Floor one or two of them. We're being stubborn. Not seeing any of them physically shorted together though. Mm. 
And it's only going to be on the actual data bus side because that's as far as it can read. In that test. It could easily be under one of these. Apologies that you can't really see what I'm doing here. clear yet? I don't know. And apart from the ground plane and the power plane, seems seems free. Okay, so I'll just um, pour a bit of solder into one of them. Make it flow. to be uh, a wise ass. like it's now clear. Come out. It's a good desoldering station where you should be able to just push on the pins and they should just fall through. It doesn't always work like that. Not when they've been sat in there for 30 something years. All the holes are clear, tr clear trust me. There you go, see it just literally lifts. There's no, I'm not putting any pressure on it at all to lift out. There you go, out it comes and no pads lifted. So what I'm gonna do here, uh, <clears throat> is I grab my phone at this point, and I will run it up and I will just have a quick uh, zoom in on that chip socket that where that was like I say pretty convinced that it's not actually the uh, if anything it's probably going to be the one right next to the CPU it's going to be this E2 chip if anything I can't see it being it doesn't look like it should be the um, this one over here move these caps out of the way carefully Fold them back down afterwards. There's decoupling cap, so it wouldn't matter anyway. But no. So what I'm doing is I'm using. There's a remote cam, I think, uh, app I think that you can get for your iPhone, which allows me to stream it into Open Broadcaster. I think. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the comment. Uh, any comments whilst I'm. Uh, da, 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 da. There is also one at L9. L9. Unless there's a separate data bus, don't quite understand that bit. Uh, okay, well, well spotted. Let's just have a quick look on the scheme. Uh, let's have a look on the schematic then. So, turn that off because you don't need to see me. If I look at where the CPU emanates from, it, I think, yeah, so if I look there, uh, D0 goes to E2. It also Hmm. 
Sorry, I'm on the wrong fucking screen, aren't I? Yeah, D0, 36 down to... Th yeah, D7 to D0. All go to E2. They then pair off and come down to... If you look down there where those numbers in circles are, they're the edge connector. And then D7, if you follow this line over here, and it does say it actually goes two slash uh, to the two from sheet two side B. Okay, fair enough. And then down into BC1, and then pairs off all with some pull-up resistors. Now it could be that SIP resistor pack's failing. That would do it, because it had. No, it wouldn't cause them to short together. I don't think that. Where's that SIP resistor pack there? Uh, that's that SIP resistor pack that it's talking about. Where is that? These are R105, 104, 103. Right, okay. So let's look for those resistors. If they're loaded on the board. They may not be loaded. They say that the next door to BC1, I've just pulled BC1 out of the socket, there are no resistors. There's no R1, 10, whatever it is there. No, that SIP resistor pack uh, is not present on this PCB. <sighs> now you're saying this one goes over to L something. All right, well, we'll investigate that as well. Um, let's have a look, sheet two side B. Let's, uh, so I need to load sheet two B. Uh, sheet 2 side B right so that's 2B right okay and you should be able to see that as well get rid of that stupid thing that happens on the right okay so the data bus is on here somewhere it will actually be listed uh, apparently Techmon just released a new video follow him on Patreon if anybody's interested in uh, not watching me whilst I debug a um, a horrible short, uh, potentially shorted data boss 244 yeah there it is and it says there uh -huh. two, two microprocessors oh we've a couple more to worry about so some 244s at, you're at well spotted, L9, M9, and P10. I would be more inclined to say that it's going to be the one that we've just taken, it's going to be the one we've, uh, we've just taken off. I'm happy to pull all six if that's what it takes. And plug the pod back in. And there was me thinking this was just going to be a really simple RAM issue. But if I don't fix this one, I don't get paid for the other one I did. 6502 pod, okay. Nope. <sighs> right. Insert pod. And it takes a moment for me to reattach the pod. See what's going on. I'll laugh if it was actually that one. It's going to be one of them that's very close to it. I don't think it's going to be one of the distant ones. But, uh, we can always piggyback it. Let's see if that helps. getting the problem <laughs> well that was luck um, there's no other way to explain that than uh, that one yeah 
just pure total luck, right? So having taken out this chip here, this one, which was at BC1 there, a 244 there, um, total and utter luck. That's in there, an LS14, which I think is actually an LS02 or something. Chips on the loose all over this board, uh, all over this bench. LSO4, put that away. Uh, yes, Alright, so let's test this chip. Now, this is going to say good, I reckon. But we've seen this. Right, so you should be able to see that. It comes up LS244. Test it a few times. Nothing on the bus, so can't see any problems at all. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm going to replace. I'll just replace it anyway. It doesn't make any sense. It'll be, if I heated it up and put power to it, I'll guarantee it fails. So what we'll do is we'll whiz a 20 pin socket into there, which is what it needs to sit in. Uh, take the flip pod out. But now we're not getting any errors whatsoever. So we'll do that. Find a 20 pin socket, which we've got back here. Which the floor has now. We are powered off. Yes, we are. Stick you into there. What do I need next? My piece of trusty tape. Just hold the uh, chip in place for a moment. Right, are you going to be able to see that? So can you see? You can. You can see quite well on the. Uh, uh, um, it's everything's reversed. There it is. So these are where the ROM socket sits. So somebody previously re replaced all these ROM sockets. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, not a fan. And they've obviously not defluxed the board and things like that. So right, let me stick this back in. Uh, socket more to the point. Okay. So I'll stick a piece of tape over, which just holds it in place, stops it falling out. And then press underneath with my finger, and then just reheat the two pins I've just flowed, at which point they'll set into place. It, surface tension pulls them in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's that inso installed. You over there. Yep. Happy with your soldering. Gently remove that from the board. Put me a piece of tape back here. Because I'll need that again. Check the other side of the board. I haven't lifted anything, pulled anything. Nope. Okay. So we've just heated the board up slightly by doing that. We will put the flip pod back on. Don't let me sidetrack you, I don't know nothing. Uh, the DRAMs also hang off the data bus. Yeah, but we've just proved it, uh, that it wasn't that. Uh, I don't think they hang directly. I think the date, hang on, you've got me thinking now. Um, does the, do the DRAMs directly hang off the data bus or do they go through a marshalling buffer? It, does, it wouldn't surprise me if they don't go through a marshalling buffer uh, somewhere in it. Well, that's easy enough to find. Back to there. Sheet that one. 
go back into there. I wish I could tell it to stop loading this stupid panel on the right hand side. I don't want to see that. Right, data bus. Nope. Uh, hang on. So let's look at where the data in, in out comes from. Alright, so you, what we're looking for is... Nope, they go through a marshalling set of uh, muxes. Those ones. DRAM address, DRAM write enable. We're almost in the right spot here. Address controller. So we find the actual DRAMs and what we want is the D in and the D out. Right, so that's the D out because these are one bit. So DO there, where's your DI? Yeah, DIs come up. Nope, they're marshalled. So they come off MD. So this bit here, DRAM input, uh, data input. So it's this block here which creates the MD signals for them. So no, they're not directly off the data bus, those. I didn't think they were. You are correct, via P5. And you see, might have repaired, might have repaired one or two of these ones before. Right. Um, Checking some state and things. Oh. Huh. Wow, we've been at this quite a while. Uh, bugger. <laughs> Nick Whale. Uh, risk to Lee, you can get compressed air cans. I know I can. I just don't have one to hand, but thank you very much. <laughs> a bug. <laughs> Visualizer plus a few magic arms. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, definitely. All right, let's get back to this. Otherwise, we're never going to get it done. Okay, so we've got our trusty thing on there. Switch you on. Bus test. Bus test. So I'm just. I'm basically doing multiple bus tests. And I'm not getting nothing. So I'm going to naughtily put this chip back into circuit, as is. Oh, there we go. So we have a problem. Take that one away. Put a brand new one in. And hopefully the problem goes away. <sighs> he hopes. Bend the pins in just so it, uh, it's easier to take in and out. Yes, I know the power's on. Ah, that's interesting. Put a brand new chip in there. And it's still wanting to do that. Now, is that because of some other signal? Now, that's interesting as to why that's doing that now. Without it, it's not causing a problem. With it, it is. Mm. Right, have we got some other issue here? So what else is hanging off the data bus? that can cause that kind of problem. That having taken out its legs basically for that. Uh, what is the chip at? Let's go back to the microprocessor. Right, I want to know what the one, what one of the chips at A something is doing. Address. So you've got. Okay, so the address is A B one and P two. For some of it, so it's not the address bus. It's data bus zero and five tied apparently. Hmm. 
yeah I think we're gonna have to we may well have to have to knock this on the head and come back to it but hmm Wrong test out. 78 oh, a to 7 signature. I can't trust the data bus to look at the RAM. 5CD7. That ah, that's because there's no ROM in there. Uh, which is that one. I can't trust the data bus. Uh, To look at the RAM until I can read the ROM. So I've got this phantom problem going on. Yeah, see that's reading as EA15. And if I repeat it, yeah, I'm getting different values back every time. All right. Okay, one, one other thing to look at is the clock circuit. And I suppose the clock could cause this kind of problem. So let's let's find the clocks. Let's make sure we've got what we should have in terms of clock and so on. It's this CPU. Let's have a look. CPU clock. IRQ. No. Theta zero. Pin thirty-seven is off. Theta X. Yeah. Pin thirty-seven on the. Okay, so that's that one. So the CP, right, so there we go, pin 37 carries theta zero. Hmm. Which is the output of theta x and ext lud. So we can look at. Pin three of C4 for this one. C4 pin three. So we need to move the flute pod to do that to that side. Oh, green pin always eludes me. There's the ground. And put you back up there. So I'm looking at C3. Uh, C3 pin what? Pin 3. C4 pin 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. C. Pin 3. Well, that one's already actually been replaced. And on the oscilloscope, I can see I've got a waveform which has 1.25 megahertz. Now, I don't know if that's correct or not. Is it supposed to be 125 or is it supposed to be a little bit more? I thought it was supposed to be about 1.5, not 1.25. <sighs> What's the CPU supposed to run at for a missile command? Phase X sync generated signal at ah, 1.25. Yeah, okay, it's 1.25. Except during the last 32 scan lines, blah blah blah. When it uh, at this time, theta X 0.69 pulse is high on every other pulse. Uh, high pulse of pin extend clock extend. 
yeah, extend. Microprocessor generated signal that when high displays the th delays the theta zero clock input holds blah 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 dear so it is the right it is the right speed. Okay. So I think the sync chain's probably all okay. So we are back to oh, is that the E2 one? Don't know. No, that was the BC one, mate. Right? Um Hmm. Watchdog shouldn't be doing anything. It should be um, ignoring it. See, so it says OK. And then you do a bus test again. Read sys CTL. system control there's one bit that keeps changing all right Flaky data bus. Hmm. Hmm. I don't really want to have to take all these other chips off. I've got six of them to take off, and I don't really want to have to do it. Uh, what are we going to do here? Well, this is an example of a board trolling me. Um, We'll take the E2 off and see if that reduces it. It could be load on the data bus. Uh, that would, that kind of thing would do it. It's the first time I've had one of these types of problems in this particular manner. So, I switched off, removed that. Let's take E2 out. See what happens when we do that.
think that's going to pretty much fall out as well. Up she comes. Absolute minimum pressure. I am literally just touching the edges. In case anybody's wondering, I know there's, there is like a big debate about, oh, you shouldn't touch the board with a screwdriver. I'm like, there's no power, there's no battery there or anything like that floating around it. Um, that one tests a 244 as well. And again underneath it, I cannot see anything problematic. So let's lift up this. Okay, make it do loop the loop. Pant's still watching, he knows I'm going to end up staying up all night to do this. Okay, so taking out E2 didn't solve the problem. But if I take out that one, my problem goes away permanently. So it's got to be somewhere down here in this area. Um, the, the, the problem can't be anywhere else now. I can prove this by taking the chip out and I can use the original chip or I can use the, this one here that's um, that I've just taken out of E2. I can substitute that in. Um, see what that does. That should be perfectly happy to work in there and then cause the same error. Yep. Okay, so without with with BC one removed, what can't we get at? Let's let's have a look on the schematic. What can't we, what can't we get out with with BC one taken out? Um, so we're all the way over here. BC one gives us access to. Suppose there's a there's a chance that one of the chips that controls that could be felt could be flaky. Okay. So that gives us access to all three five eight twenty eight twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty. Um, but I still have access effectively to this chip over here. So if I do a ROM a ROM verify. Uh, seven eight zero zero two seven F F F. So what I'm saying is that without BC one in the board, right, we know that was going to happen. What do I get? Ah, I get the correct signature this time. And if I put the next chip back in sequence, which is 03A824, back into there, because that one will be visible suddenly as well. Like so, and do a wrong check at 7000 to 7FF as well, and go back to. Uh, you need to be able to see the. browser. So we're looking for uh, that signature there, 3877, so B25D, and we get that now. Okay, right, so I'm going to put, right, so we're going to have to start looking around before we start putting that other chip back in, the E2 chip, uh, which we'll do in a moment, we'll put the E2 chip back in. Uh, right, okay, so knowing that I can get those two um, just okay there, and I can consistently, so let me repeat that, that test. So I've got two, these two ROMs are in, 
the BC1, this chip here, cuts off the access to these four. So if I do a wrong check, oh yeah, B25D. So I'm getting consistency. So I wonder if I can actually do a RAM test at this point. RAM short, 0 to 3 FF. It won't show anything on the screen. Ah, uh, no bits. Oh, it's not there anyway. Uh, oh, it should be. BTS FF. It's FF. All right. So I've definitely got some issue with the with the RAM section of the system. And we'll come back to that in a minute because that's going to be... I don't think that's through the E2 one. Or is it? Is, the, is that through E2? It could be, actually. Uh, I have a feeling it actually is through E2. Wouldn't surprise me if E2 marshalled... Uh, where does that actually go to? So that's to BD765432, blah, 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 to sheet 2, side A, sheet 2, side B. So it's wherever those two go to. I have a feeling they go to the RAM. Uh, do, um, give you, I need to set up some more shortcuts for this. So if I turn the, that view off um, and go back to there, what I'm trying to show you is that... E2, which is out of circuit at the moment, BD7, BD0 to BD7, do actually go off to sheet 2, which is part of the RAM circuit. So I have a feeling that that's why I can't see the RAM at this point. But we need to figure out why we've got problems um, with uh, this chip here, or most of the point, with the selects. So we'll plug the ground back on for the old oscilloscope. And I will give you... Uh, I can't give you all three at the moment. That'll have to be next time. Uh, let me go down. So the thing that we're looking for is the bit that controls BC1. So the, the circuits that we're, we're concerned about here are C5, which is an LS00, and B6. So let me just enlarge that a bit more. So it's in uh, James size print. Well, there's... Yeah, there's the HO4 and LSO4 kind of thing there. Um, so, let's have a look at pin 1 and 19, which are select pins. If they were floating and doing bad things intermittently, that would cause all sorts of shit to go. 1. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that shouldn't look like that. There's your noise. Can we put a chip in it? Sure that's actually coming high enough to actually be a signal that yeah 19 uh, 19's there we are at one volt aren't we yeah one volt per division it's coming up as far as what one two two and a bit volts the H, that, H, that LSO4 should be I think it's causing the, boat, the the data bus to float. So let's go back to B6, 3 and 4. B, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. B, which here, here we go. B6, 3 and 4. Right, what, hang on, what I've got a U1 on the screen at the moment. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't show you that. Apologies. Right, okay. If you can see this, there's one of the select gates to that data bus chip. Uh, it's BC1 underneath here. So it's this chip, the, the one I, I took out of circuit. If you can see that, it's only coming about halfway up. It's not really transitioning into a higher or low state. And this TTL chip requires it to be, you know, certainly a bit more than the voltage it's getting to there. So we're going to have a look at B6, which is its controller. Uh, B6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. B, which is here. It's pin 3 is its input. Yes, and pin 4 is its output. So, pin 3 is, is part of the problem there. Okay, so that's an LSO4 chip. So, let's have a look. Or it could be the transition from... Uh, 
There, are, there is a pad as well uh, that's near that B6. Hmm. Two, three, four, five, six. There's a solder pad that you can bridge. No, three to four. So that's an inverter, is that B6. Um, are you seeing the schematic? No, you are now. So B6 is an inverter, which is fed from uh, C5, 13, 12, 11. So we're gonna have, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll go across there, so five. C there's 13 there's your 12 and there's your 11 yeah so I've either got and again uh, if I show you I think you do that one no that one control 4 is that one so yeah uh, it's either this chip or the LSO4 that's the problem. So what is the chip? So it's an LS00 and LSO4. So the way we try, way we do this, we just grab an LSO4 and an LSO4 for this. So double O, which is one of them. We put on C5. Do I now get on 13, 12, 11? 13, 12, still not really being pulled up, uh, LSO4, there's obviously some signal getting into it somewhere, noise basically, that's where it's amplifying, and the pin's a little bit more on that, is that LSO4, uh, LSO4, that'll do, I know it says HO4, but to be honest, it won't matter in this particular application. There we go. And now it's grounded correctly, which means that three in and four out is ooh, that looks like B six six B three in yeah four out inverted correctly and now I've got no boss short so if I take off C5 yep yeah. so I find the bus short um, one of these two chips is bad yeah so it's definitely it's one or both of these is bad. Uh, this uh, C, it's either the LS00 or the um, or the LSO4. So I'm just going to test to see if the LS00 is is good on the tester. The the one I'm proposing to put over the top of it should come back. Yeah, LS00. Yeah, that's fine. We'll put that over C6. Sorry, C5. That's okay there. <sighs> so, this is 12, 11. That's now got a decent output on it if I take the B1 off it. Yeah, that's fine now. So it was the C, it is the C chip that's the problem. Three. Is it showing? What's it showing on there? Three in, four out. That would seem about right. Three, three low. There's your eleven. Yep. Now I should have a 
a clean bus. I do have a clean bus. It's the C, the chip at C6 that's my problem. Right. Uh, so my issue chip is not the LSO4. Yeah, LSO4 good. Uh, so I'll put that away. Right, so we, re we replace, what's well, a quote, Lewis? We repeal and replace. <laughs> I do like some of his phraseology. Uh, all right, take this off. Yeah, yeah, you come. Sit you nice and neatly in there. I keep going for the wrong one for, uh, for the wide angle, wide view. So I need to also put a 20 pin socket in. Let's do the 20 pin socket. I've got a bit of a, I don't know. I know the temperature doesn't really change, but I've got like, it feels like hay fever going on. At the moment. Move that connector. Let's stick this 20 pin socket in here. I've got one that's not completely evacuated. No, nope, they're all good. Uh, the chip legs are all straight. This one sort of held itself in, so I didn't need to put the sticky tape over the top. It was, it was a bit of a, a nice firm press into the socket. I really need to get an extractor for it at home. The solder fumes are actually starting to affect my vision, which is causing my eyes to itch late at night. It doesn't seem to matter which way I point my head, it will always come towards my face. that socket in. What I want to change now is this one here, C C5. So let's let you out. When you be saying something, no, I don't believe in Amtec 551 flux either. <laughs> I do believe in flux, but unfortunately, it kills me to use it. Yeah, all nice and clean. I wish I could show you that, uh, but you're having a decent desoldering station versus the piece of shit that I've been using for a few weeks. The one that you saw me use last time. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, I'm popping the right chip. Yep, yeah, there you go. Absolute minimal pressure. Tiny bit of crowbar in either side. I suppose I could use the chip puller for it. I don't like to use the chip puller. And the reason I don't like to use the chip puller is because if you've got like a straggle of a trace that's left on it, then... Yay, see? Uh, will it do it? Not found. That's what we're looking for. <sighs> so that's what, a 16 or a 14? 1, 2, 3, 4, 14. 14 pin socket. Try to keep behind me here. If you are in, uh, I suppose I should shill for our web shop as well, shouldn't I? No, I'm not going to do that. Not yet, because it needs sorting out as our web shop. But we do carry all these components. 
sockets, proms, transistors, you name it, for fixing these arcade ones. We carry them in stock because we have to buy them in bulk. So I might as well churn the stock over. So help us to stay in business and not be taken over by an evil, maniacal organisation that basically seems to be hell-bent on you know, dominating the entire arcade industry at the moment. We shall have to form a rebel alliance. Where's the socket? There it is. There's always somebody who wants to own everything. You see, no one knows what I'm talking about. But you see, what will happen now is that some people will go, Are you talking about me? And I'll go, No, I'm not. Why? Do you feel guilty? It's always my answer to everything. Am I talking about you? No. Do you feel guilty? Because if I'm only talking about you if you feel guilty. My uh, ex-girlfriend used to say that she didn't have the concept of guilt. Guilt tripping would only work if she could ever actually feel guilt. And then she slept with a neighbour. in business. We can now put the chip in there at E2. We can put the fluke pod test probe back on. And I go through this this procedure and I before I even try and force the board to run in any way shape or form. Alright, oh look we seem to have like a V-Sync issue at this moment. That's interesting. But no bus short. Let me give you the view that shows what I'm talking about, which is that one. Bus short, bus short, no bus short. Excellent. Right, let's put some chips back in and verify them. 02302. So I'll stick that one back in. Um, off camera when I'm when I get the board working, I will probably replace the ROM sockets as a boring procedure to watch. Uh, so I'll work our way backwards. Uh, Fifty. Where we go? Something. Six. Six eight zero zero. Oh, hang on. Let me give you the uh, this view, and so that you can see the browser with the. There we go. With the checksums in it. Uh, I will get it so you can see the camera on uh, on this side as well. Uh, but basically, what I'm doing is I'm looking for the ROM checksum for 68. I'm working with your way backwards. We did 7800, 7006. So we're doing 6800 to 6 FFF. 6800, return to 6456 FFF. With a signature of zero. <coughs> we should get. Um, I can't read that version of it. Where is my version? There. Uh, we should get 6800. We should get something like EF62. I get the F62, what do you know? Right. Uh, now I need to put the next one back up, so we'll uh, 35822 into that one. Might have been the entire board stop reason, to be honest. This, easily. We'll know in a moment. ROM test, 6,000 to 6,7F, also with that, and that's running, and we get a signature of 3,6,000, uh, did I put that in wrong? I should get E850 at that point. I'm getting 3540. 2, 2, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2. So, 5,058, 5, 6, 000, 6, 7. Right, let me rerun re this. Um, 6, not one, right, 6, 7, FF. With a signature of 0. Did I just test it wrong? I have done that before. E850. 
No, I'm getting different. Ah, okay. Getting different answers for 6067FF. So we may have a bad ROM. Yeah, we've got a flaky ROM. Okay, that will cause problems. So we'll put the other two back in and see where we get with those. 0358202, which is that one. Don't see it being the socket. It's going to be the ROM. I can soon reseat the ROM in the socket. Um, and I can move this chip to another socket to see um, to see if that's the problem. So let's go back one from 5800 to 5FF. That's my bedtime now, right? looking forward to watching the, the RAM part another time. Three nine seven seven. Well, that one's correct. F two five A. So what we'll do is I'll just pull. Uh, where's my chip puller? We'll move this chip from here, and I'll put it into the first socket. For those of us who are still watching, I think my stream uh, view numbers has got down to about zero at this point, probably. What's my subs uh, view count? Oh, eight. Okay. Alright, so ROM test at five. Six, zero. E762. EF62. Ah, that is correct. Oh no, E762. Ah, I could have got that wrong. Let me check on quarter cade. Set one, which is the one we're looking at, and it should be E F sixty two, and I get E seven six two. So I think I have actually got problems with the ROM because if it's in another socket, reading five thousand five seven FF. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a flaky ROM. Okay. So I'll pull that, put this one back in, put the correct one in. Do a repeat of that socket. So all I did there was swapped over a couple of chips in the socket. Uh, control that. You should be able to see that. E2, F25A or E25A. That one. F25A. F25A, that's what I get. So I have a, a dodgy EEPROM. Uh, let me read it. Uh, that, uh, that one, and let's see if we can add another window capture. Call this one EEPROM. And find, oh no. Cancel, don't want to do that. Move, yes. And I want to add a window capture called EPROM. This one will be the, I can't read it from back here. That one, yes, for Universal Programmer. Okay, cool. Right. Move that up. Oh, 
come on. Oh, it's because it's... Ha, I see. Actually, click on the EEPROM one to, in order to change the fucking thing, don't I? Ah, I got you. Because it's not the full window size. That one. Let's do a reset transform. Ah, transform. Reset transform. Grab that handle there and pull that in. Grab the bottom one. Crop it to there as well. At which point then I can legitimately grab the bottom handle in the corner that I wasn't looking at. And I can pull that out like so. I can also move it to that side so it doesn't get too far in the way of what I'm doing. Okay. Right, if I go now to the EEPROM programmer. Which is that one. And I select device. And I'll need a 2716 here. I've got a 2716. Which is what it is, and we go buffer, and I go edit, fill buffer hex, OK, and do a read, reads in, save this out as MC03, uh, dot bin. Go to here, go to ROM ident, uh, load that up, 03582202. I bet it verifies, which it always do. 8202-N1. And that is indeed, oh, it should be KL1 that. Three five eight two two. Yeah, it is all three five eight two two or two. Is it board reference is wrong. That means it's JK, not M. Two 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 three two one. So I get a two seven one six and reburn it. Two seven one six. That's going to be. Interesting, those were 32s, right, 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 those ones, 2732, yes, those were 2732, so we have 2716, so we're this today, there's 2716, which 2716. That's blank. Is it? Oh, no. Ah, I don't think I'm breaking the chip socket properly. Blank, that needs blanking. I'll do that. Another one. So all I did was read in the thing and it does verify as 035822 exactly as it should do. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, writing a new EEPROM. Or basically I can keep the thing in the buffer and just write it straight back out. Cop. Yeah, that one works. All right, so we'll do a write. Hopefully you what you're seeing all this because I've got it on the right thing. It verifies. We take that out. And we put it straight in. I know I do a lot of bad things like leave the board powered on whilst I do this stuff, but it works. Put you into that socket there. Okay. Now then, so what do you need to see? You need to see the browser. So we turn off the EEPROM. You can see the browser again. Uh, one. Right, so we're going to do this is the 6000 
Six, eight thousand, this is it. Right, so Rom Reed. Six, eight, a lot. Uh, six, F. Signature of zero. EF62, which is exactly what it should be. Right, can I do a ram check at this point? So the next job that we always do when I do any of these board repairs is I grab a, um, a bag. So on this thing here it says, I don't know, you won't be able to see this. Here we go, at the, at the top of this part here it says that basically I've got ram from 0 to 3 FFF. Uh, so if I go... No, I didn't want to do that. I just opened up the wrong one, didn't I? Uh, can I do a control Z? No, I'll have to go back into that. And I'll have to go... Uh, that's the one. Okay, because I closed. Right, so you can see that. That's good. Right, so we stick in one of these press locks because then the customer can trust us that we've actually changed parts and not told them we've changed parts and not actually done anything. <sighs> so my next job now is, if I go and show you that, is I need to do a RAM check from 0 to 3 FFF. So... First of all, can I do a simple write at zero and read it? Write zero to 55, read zero, and I get 55. Ram, not to three, and fifth. And what you should see is you should start seeing some stuff happen on this screen over here. That's be very interesting. I think we might actually really have a couple of bad RAM chips, but it could be more likely the data bus issue was the problem. So I'll have to just let it run. This will take a minute. I was expecting patterns, but I suppose if there's nothing in the colour color palette registers, then it won't write anything, will it? This takes a few moments. So I'm just going to check messages and so on. Nothing I care about there. Let's look at comments. I forgot so give me a second <laughs> he's doing a ram test uh he's not complaining so far which is a good thing so and that should let me start the board in a moment if that's the case if it comes back okay then i'll try and start the board but i'll do it in test mode i don't want to start it up in because there might be other issues i'd rather i'd rather it start in test mode than in real mode and I don't think I'll see anything until I put the pokey chip back in anyway because I haven't put that back in yet. I've got to find the pokey chip. Let, me, let the RAM test finish. Oh, RAM bits going into that. That's good. I think we might pass the RAM test. What do I do with the pokey chip? Two chips over here, aren't I? I think that is. Oh shit. No, what do I do with the pokey? I think that's the CPU, that one. Pokey chip, there we go. 
So on the screen you can see at the top the garbage, that's basically the fluke's test pattern, but I haven't seen anything appear down here, which normally I would have thought there would, but there might not be any colour bit stuff loaded because the pokey chip's not present. I think it might get some data from that. I could be completely wrong, of course. Come on, finish your RAM test. If it finishes that, I'll power the board off, put the pokey chip back in and start it back up again and see if it'll come up in test mode. It's not complaining about the RAM. The screen sheet seems to be being drawn correctly. taking this long last time <laughs> there we go we've got an okay for the ram test that's good all right so that's a circuit i don't have to worry about chasing my ass around okay clip on to test mode where's the self-test self-test yeah. okay turn the volume up a fraction turn the board power on setting that's now got the thing that tells me that the V blank circuit isn't right hmm interesting what happens if I take the test off yeah, we're just flashing. Uh, we can perform all our ROM tests and RAM tests, but... Uh, hmm, that's interesting. That we're getting that far. So I'm just performing another RAM test on this. Not quite sure why I'm doing that. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, what does it mean when it does that? A long tone followed by a reboot. I'm sure it means the V blank. The V blank circuit's not working. The other thing I suppose is it could be the pokey chip. Cheers, mate. Um, I've got a starting point. Well, we tried that. Yeah, it's the fact that it's resetting. Light screen reset. There are some error codes to this that tell you what's going on with it, so I'm going to have to try and find those. All right, well, I don't think I'm going to find them anytime uh, too soon. Uh, the other thing I can try, because I don't think I need the fluke at this point, is I can put its own CPU back in. I've had previous problems with running my 6502 pod. It's 
so put it on. There we go. Ram OK, ROM OK. Perfect. So I don't know why you want to run with the flute podding. I've had some run with the flute podding. Take that off. Missile command. There we go. Yeah, all looks good. Put the test back on, make sure the inputs are working. I haven't got a track ball, but... There we go. Right. So... Right, all the switches that I can possibly change on it. Seem to be working just fine. One, two coins, one play. One coin, one play. There we go, six cities, one, one effect. I don't never know what that means. It's in English. There you go, it's running. Okay, so I changed two chips, basically. Those two. I changed an EEPROM and an LS00 um, zero, zero, and gate. Okay, well, that's it. Woohoo! <laughs> Cheers, Nick. <laughs> I've, by the way, I've got two more of these to do, so I'm not going to do them tonight. That's. Uh, that's it. So let me just have a quick, a quick look at something very interesting here, because technically this has uh, been under timed conditions. Uh, how long have we been streaming for? Two hours, 13 minutes, 33. So, okay, take uh, two hours. Two hours to do a repair. Okay, that sounds about right for one of these. Um, yeah. This particular customer, I've also said that I'll do some uh, further destruction testing uh, on uh, our machine uh, at work. So I'll take this in with me tomorrow. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is just clean the desoldering tip. So I'm just going to give you all a quick tip. If you've, got any of the, if you've got one of these, all right, before you shut it down at night, grab, grab the reamer, stick it down the nozzle. Squeeze it. Um, grab some solder. Okay. No, I don't know. I'm going to have to get my head round reversing camera angles and stuff. There we go. What we're going to do is I'm just going to put a dab of solder and seal the end up for the evening. Sure what we did there. We've obviously we've upset we've made the board gods angry somehow. I think we might have got a bit of something on the board. Okay. Somewhere, possibly. We made the board gods angry. Ah. Maybe we do actually still have a problem. That is definitely a V blank problem, that. <laughs> ah. Yeah, it's just constant reset, that. 
All the ROMs all seem fine. And so on. And do we get some schmoo or something like that on the board? Hmm. Well, that explains why the flute wasn't doing it then. Okay, V blank circuit. I'll have to read that, that schematic, but... Could have dropped a piece of salt on this, I guess, couldn't I? Look. Okay, well, well that was dumb. Anyway, I think I've had enough now for tonight. I'm going to go to bed. Um, so I'm going to sign off and I'll see you all um, on the next one.